Hi, this is Ben Gertzel. It's my pleasure to take part in Turing Church 2011. I'm sorry I can't participate in real time, but I'm having some internet connectivity problems, so I decided to just send this video instead. I just moved into a beautiful place about 30 minutes drive north of Hong Kong in a village called Tinkok, right between the, uh, the oceans and the mountains. It's a great place, but the internet connectivity isn't quite worked out yet. Anyway, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about science and spirituality how I think they're connected now, and how I think they will be connected in the future as artificial intelligence becomes a larger and larger factor in the world, and a singularity or something similar occurs. The main thing I want to highlight in these brief remarks is the possibility that science, as we now know it, and religion, or as I'd rather say, collective spirituality, as we now know it, may in future fuse into some sort of novel pursuit, novel way of understanding and collectively seeking knowledge that differs from anything we have today, but incorporates some of the more interesting and powerful aspects of both science and religion. Both science and religion involve groups of people coming together to collectively decide what assumptions to make about the world. Both of them combine an egoic aspect in which the self is reaffirmed and the individual strives to achieve something with more of a collectivist aspect where the individual's ideas and feelings are dominated by the judgments of a, a group of people that the individual belongs to. Both of them have their strengths. Science has done amazing things in terms of enabling the discovery of technology and the analytical and rational understanding of the world Religion and other spiritual pursuits have done a great deal to give life meaning to many people and have helped us chart out the various states of consciousness that we're able to occupy. But neither of them on their own is complete. One way to look at the weaknesses of both science and religion is to look at the phenomenon of consciousness. Science can't grapple with the so-called hard problem of consciousness, how to connect subjective experience with objective empirical measurements of what's going on in the brain and the body. On the other hand, in spite of millennia of trying, the religious and spiritual approach to consciousness has not yet come up with a reliable technology for improving the human mind, for bringing human beings into extraordinary states of well-being. Peace on earth and goodwill toward men, it's not yet here, in spite of the best intentions of people from a host of different spiritual traditions. What might it look like to bring science and spirituality together. Looking at the problem of understanding consciousness may give us a clue. Let's imagine a little bit of science fiction here. Imagine we have some human scientists, we have some AGI, artificial general intelligence robot scientists, we have some cyborg scientists where people have jacked into machines. 
to enhance their thinking and enhance the scope of states of consciousness that they can enter into. Imagine this diverse collective of scientists is engaged in a variety of activities. First of all, they're doing empirical experiments on their brains and their minds to understand their cognitive processes empirically. They're trying to work out theories of how they think individually and as a group. But they're also doing more than that. They're entering into shared experiential spaces together. They're understanding, evaluating, reacting to each other's states of mind in the same way that the monks in an ashram do. Furthermore, imagine that they're actually tinkering actively with the internals of their brains, their meat brains in the case of human scientists, or their digital case of AIs or cyborgs, so that they can manipulate their own minds and then see what difference this makes both empirically in terms of their behaviors and experientially in terms of the mind spaces they enter into together with others. This kind of group of scientists slash mental explorers acting together with a facility for self-experimentation beyond anything human beings now have. This could well lead to a way of working, thinking, learning, and growing together way beyond anything in the domain of modern science or modern religion. Well, there's a lot more I could say in this vein, but you get the point. The ways we have of understanding the world right now just scratch the surface of what will be possible once we approach or pass a singularity. And these new ways of understanding things that are going to come about, incorporating aspects of science and spirituality as we know them today, these new ways of understanding are going to be critical for helping us to grapple with the singularity and all the associated changes in our outer and inner lives.